Do you want to start a business to give your family more freedom? Do you desire to have a marriage that makes your friends jealous? Do you want to spend more quality time with your children? We are your hosts, Matt and Jocelyn Woodruff, and we cannot wait to share this journey with you. Welcome to our family-friendly podcast. Join our conversations where we talk about how to build a business that will give us the freedom we choose. Welcome to the Family Life Movement Podcast. So Stacey, how does taking care of ourselves improve our own confidence and self-esteem? You know, when you take care of yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually, it it has a huge impact on your self-esteem. Our whole mindset of the way we think, you know, first of all, self-esteem, you know, it could be from the way we've been raised or it could be from a traumatic event in life or something could have happened. And, you know, there's lots of ways your self-esteem can be infected. But when you want to have good self-esteem and you want to feel confident, you know, the best way um, to, to do it is you need to start working on yourself. You need to realize that you need to start loving yourself is the first step. You have to accept yourself for who you are because a lot of times we always want to be someone else or be something that we can't be. And we have to be realistic. The first thing we need to do is stop and just look at ourselves accept ourselves for who we are and love ourselves for who we are. And then if you want to make changes in yourself, if you're not happy with the person you are, you know, you have to realize that we have the power to change ourselves, that we don't have to be who we are if we don't want to be. We can make ourselves better. We can make ourselves stronger. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's all within our mindset. And the first thing you really need to do, I, I like to do, and I think works really well, is you make short-term goals and long-term goals. And you also keep a journal. You start writing and you start talking about your feelings, your emotions, what you're going through in life. And you start really analyzing who you are as a person. Look at where your strengths are, look at where your weaknesses are, and start making short-term goals and long-term goals. Where are you now and where do you wanna see yourself in six months? Where do you wanna see yourself in, 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 in a year from now? Where do you wanna see yourself for five years from now you know start planning these things out you know start realizing that you know and also when you're focusing on your weaknesses and you're focusing on your strengths you know what can you do to improve the things in your life that you're not happy with those weaknesses in your life what can you do that will make those things improve make you a better person and and start making those goals to to focus on that. So the goals that you're going to make, those, those short-term and long-term goals, you're going to be focusing on your, your weaknesses and you're going to start trying to improve those weaknesses by making goals little by little. And you don't always have to try to, you're not going to accomplish all these things one, two, three. It could take years. But what you do is week by week, you start focusing on little things and you start you know, improving um, yourself little by little. In a while, in a couple of months, you're going to see a beginning beginning of a new person. And you know, you have to you have to look in the mirror. When you look in the mirror in the morning and you you're brushing your teeth and you see this person in front of you, do you like that person? That is the question. Do you like who you see? And if you don't like who you see, just don't sit there and not do anything about it. A lot of people feel that they can't change. They feel that you know, this is who I am and I just have to just deal with it. And that's when you start seeing people walk around. You ever see those people in the, in the mall or the store? They don't smile. They're just not you you know, you talk to them or they might not be very friendly. They just look like they have misery stuck inside them. It's yep. because they're not happy with themselves. They don't like the person they see. They've been through maybe some hardships in life and they're just full of anger, either resentment or hate, you know, and there's a lot of negative emotions going on. And that affects your self-esteem. That affects, you know, who you are as a person. You know, when you're not happy, you're not going to want to do anything to better yourself as a person. And you really, you know, you really have to start focusing on you know, realizing that you can change. We have the ability to change ourselves and you have to look in the mirror and say, who do I want to see? What's going to make me happy? What kind of person do I want to be? And, you know, you have the ability to change. And the thing is too, a lot of people fear change. They're afraid to change. If it's one thing, if they they feel like they don't have the ability ability to change, 
you know, that's their low self-esteem saying that, no, you can't, there's no way you could do this, you know? And then, you know, people also, you know, they have, they fear change, you know, they fe fear what's going to happen if I change, you know, what's my life going to be, you know, what's going to happen? And they get scared and it's those scared feelings that pull them back too, you know? And so you have to realize that change is a good thing. And if you, if you change and you're not liking what you're seeing, you could always revert back if you want to, you know, you have the ability to do whatever you want when it comes to your mind, your body and your, and your, you know, you know, your, your soul, you have the ability. So, you know, but usually when you, when you start changing and you're focusing on good things, you're not going to want to revert back because you're going to start liking what you see. You know, you want to wake up in the morning and say, I like you. I like who I see in that mirror, you know, and, you know, and if you don't like who you see, start working on it because you have the ability to change. Well, I absolutely love this. I love what you're saying. You know, one of the biggest things that I hear you saying is, you know, First, you have to make that decision. It's not something that's going to happen naturally. It's not something that's going to happen instantly. Instead, it, t it takes intentional effort to wake up every single morning to say, hey, today I'm going to be better. I love also what you said about it's not going to happen instantly. Instead, I love what I have heard, which is, hey, you know what? How can I be 1% better today than what I was yesterday? Just 1%. Right. That 1% adds up every single day over the year, that's 365% better than what you were last year, right? right? So let's talk a little bit about the different things that can affect people's confidence and affect people's self-esteem. Uh, you know, one of the things that you specialize in is, you know, people's physical appearance, helping them to feel, you know, naturally more beautiful and stuff like that. What are some things, even physical characteristics that people go through that affect their own confidence and self-esteem? Well, lately, you know, I have been working a lot with hair loss and I realized, you know, at first you, when you think about hair loss, you think about just men, you know, you see men all the time, they're losing their hair or they, you know, they either shave their head or they just accept it. And it, you know what, with, when it comes to men, you know, it affects them, but you know, it's more acceptable by society. A lot of women suffer from hair loss too. And it's very devastating because women can't, you know, can't hide it as much, you know, men can shave their head or men it's accepted by society it's not accepted by society when a woman starts losing her hair and her hair starts thinning out or she's going through balding and you know it's very devastating because in our society hair has always been a sex symbol it's always made uh, it's a way women make themselves look sexier feel better about themselves you see how much money is put into the beauty industry you know to make all these different color hairs and all these different dyes and hairstyles and all these things they come out with every year to to do things to your hair to make it more beautiful you know so when it's, you know it's very common for women to start losing their hair you know we have a te we have a hormone you know um, testosterone both men and women have it and when that starts to convert it into DHT you know then it starts making the hair follicle smaller and people start in these people start developing hair thinning they start developing balding and that's when the devastation starts coming in when you wake up and in the morning you see hair on your pillow or you're washing your hair and you look down and there is a clump of hair on the bottom of the shower you know that's the devastating thing you know it, you know we hate to say it but you know our physical characteristics do play a role and there's things that you can do, you know, and, and in, in the urban world, we have a lot of different things that we try to do, natural things. Now, one thing can cause stress and can cause hair loss is, is stress, you know, learning to cope with stress, you know, um, and also, you know, before we get on to the stress thing, because that's a whole different area, I just want to say that, you know, I have been working with a company called Hair Restoration Laboratories, and they came out with a natural shampoo and conditioner. And I actually gave you some because I wanted you to try it um, because it's, it's great. It has all these natural ingredients, all these herbs and, and different things like green uh, extract. And, and it's just like a whole bunch of things that actually can help, you know, help 
block DHT and help the hair follicles to, to remain open so they can have hair, you know, grow through. A lot of people are experiencing hair growth with it. They're experiencing hair thickness with it, um, you know, and there's been a lot of great things. So, you know, hair restoration laboratories, you know, uh, they have a website. If people are experiencing hair loss, I've been using it. I gave it to my husband. He's using it. And I even gave it to my, my son who's in college who's been complaining that he's seen the little receding lines, you know, and, uh, you know, so, you know, for people who are, are you know, suffering with that, because I didn't realize so there's millions of people suffering from it. And when I started doing all the research, that's when I realized how many people actually suffer from hair loss. But, you know, like I said, stress is a main factor too. People, you know, 90% of the illnesses in the United States are caused by stress and hair loss is one of them. And, you know, wrinkles, anti-aging, you know, all that stuff is all caused by stress. We have to learn how to cope with stress, you know, we have, you know, and you can't be happy when you're stressed out and, you know, and it really, you, you can't do anything when you're stressed and, you know, learn how to sweat, not sweat the little things in life and just focus on the, the real problems and realize that, you know, things, problem, we all face problems and we have to learn how to cope with them. And that's a whole different issue because we're right now, we're focusing on self-esteem, but maybe one day me and you will sit down and talk to people and, and show people ways to cope with stress. But, you know, learning how to deal with stress is a main issue too. Um, and that affects your self-esteem as well. And, um, you know, we, you really have to like, uh, when it comes to like, feeling good about yourself. You have to, to love yourself who you are. And, you know, like I go back into the, in the beginning, you know, um, you, physic you have to physically, spiritually, and mentally love yourself because that is the key. And, and the whole thing stems around being positive. You have to feel positive, look at life positive and throw out the negative and focus on the positive. And that helps your self-esteem too. You know, some, a lot of people as grown up, you know, had parents that, you know, didn't say such nice things to them and that were really, you know, hard on them. Either they thought being hard was a, a, a way to make them stronger or better, or they just were, that's the way they were raised. And they just, you know, the cycle just continued. And that, can affect a person's self-esteem because if you keep telling somebody that they're um, they're not good they're going to believe you you know I had one person um, with epilepsy and uh, they told you know in in Hawaii um, they believed back in the day that if you had epilepsy you couldn't tell anybody because that was a, that you were cursed so you know and so they always tell her they would always tell her don't say anything you know people will know that you're cursed and she grew up thinking that she was cursed she grew up thinking she was a bad person and that you know there was something wrong with her in, the, in, in that sense because her parents always told her that she was cursed so she believed it. And, you know, a lot of times we believe what we're told when we're growing up as a child and believe it or not, when we're kids, you know, what it, it comes, it, it, it goes, you know, what, what we're taught when we're kids and what we're, we're, you know, kind of follows us through and it affects us in our adult years. And, you know, and, and this is something you have to, you know, um, focus on too is like, you know, we're learning that the past is the past, you know, you have to focus on now and then you have to, you know, and you have to just focus on, um, you know, on making uh, goals for the future because we can change the future and, but we can't change the past. So, but we can change now and that's the key. Man, I love the emphasis that you put on words are important. That's something that, you know, as parents, we have so much control over when it comes to our kids' lives. You know, telling that little girl that, hey, because you have epilepsy, you're cursed. And I think that that's what a lot of people think. They look and they see, you know, physical or mental, you know, disorders or, or characteristics that don't measure up to other people that, you know, we love and that we respect. It's so easy to look around, right, and find someone who's better than you at something and then put yourself down. So mm -hmm. what are some ways that we can boost our own confidence and self-esteem? You know, I, I think the key, especially for me with epilepsy, is realizing that I'm not alone, that there were other people just like me. Sometimes it's really good to reach out to support groups, and it's good to go on the internet and find the organizations that have the same disorder or have the same condition as you, and, you know, start talking to other people who have it. Realize you're not the only one, and ask for advice, because, you know, I started, you know, for the longest time, I didn't lo love myself who I was as a person. I didn't 
didn't, you know, I didn't like looking in the mirror and seeing this person who had epilepsy and who had seizures, you know, it was very upsetting to me. And I didn't, you know, it was very hard to get through each day when you're, you're having seizures, you know, you didn't, you know, and it's just something that, you know, that you had, I had to struggle with. But when you had talk to people and you see other people with the same thing as you, and then people share their stories and people share how they go through, you know, I had hundreds of people contact me when I had sent out a letter to the Epilepsy um, Foundation. They have a magazine. And when I sent it out, um, you know, I asked, pe I asked them to publish the letter and I asked people to tell me how they cope with epilepsy. And that's when I got hundreds and hundreds of letters from all the United States and Canada. And that's what taught me the most is learning from others how they cope with the illness you know people with depression you know it's good to talk to other people who are depressed and learn how they deal with it people who have have gone through it have passed your stage and have are now doing well well how did they get there that's the key and that's what you want to learn you want to learn how people um, that are ahead of the ahead of the game ahead of you how they got there and you want to listen and take notes and you want to start maybe taking some of the stuff that you feel you could do and apply it to your own life. Yeah, I could not agree more. There's so much greatness and support systems and being able to be open enough to ask for advice. There's other people who have been there first. And a lot of times it's so easy to sit here and go, Hey, you know what? I'm alone. There's nobody who understands what I'm dealing with. You know, that baldness that you were talking about and, and different things. It's so easy to sit here and say, man, I'm all alone and I don't want to look bad or I don't want to look weak in some people's eyes as we, you know, switch gears and stuff like that when we're down in ourselves and we're feeling you know draggy and we're not feeling like hey you know hey how can we improve ourselves and stuff uh, what are some ways that you personally like how do you stay inspired and motivated you know especially on these days when you're like hey you know what i don't feel like it you know i i don't like what i'm seeing there are some negative things that i'm i'm seeing that i don't like in myself and hey you know what i just don't feel like getting out of bed and throwing yourself a pity party how do you stay inspired and motivated you know, there has been a times where I've gotten where I haven't been, you know, I haven't been the person I want to be, or I was wasn't doing well with my disorder. And it makes you depressed. It makes you depressed in life when you keep trying so hard to get to one specific goal, and you keep getting knocked down. You know, and every time, you know, like if you move in life, and you move two steps forward and then something happens out of the blue and knocks you back five steps. And then it's like, you know, you feel like where, you know, why has this happened to me? You know, I'm never going to get where I want to be in life. I just might as well give up. And that's when depression starts setting in, low self-esteem starts setting in, lack of confidence. And you got it. When you see yourself getting in that realm, you have to just stop and you have to try to pull yourself out of it. You have to start, you know, focusing on the positive and say, Hey, you know, this might not be going my way but this I have this is what's good in life and write down all the good things in life write down your positive qualities you know you might want to be doing x y and z but maybe you're not meant to do x y and z in life you know a lot of times I had goals I wanted to do this I wanted to do this I had wanted to be here you know but things didn't turn out that way my journey was completely different the journey I wanted to take was a completely different journey of where I ended up in life you know and sometimes I feel like life is destined you know like we are here for a reason and there is a reason why everything happens to us and I always kept that in my mind I you know and I focus on if things don't go exactly the way I want maybe it's because we're meant to be someone else we're meant to do other stuff so what is your strength what in life are you are you meant to be you know so think about all the things that you do good all the things that are great you know that that your positive qualities in life your positive strengths and focus on those things and then focus on what your passion is in life you know and and Think of yourself, you, you are a wonderful person. You are a great person. And how can you give back to life? You know, you, you know, the best way of boosting your self-esteem and confidence is by doing for others. You know, the biggest accomplishment in my life was when I started helping other people. That's when I started feeling good because, you know, when you're in life and you're not doing anything that's positive, you know, what's the point? You know, that's how, that's how you feel. Like, what's 
am I here for? What's the point in life? You know, like, you know, all these things are happening. Nothing's good. You know, uh, you know, I, I just, why, did, why am I here? You know, that's when you have to say, what's my passion in life? You want to get up in the morning. You want to feel motivated. You know, you want to be able to do things that you love. Well, think about your qualities. Think about your strengths. Start thinking about what's your passion, your true, what's the true thing in life that you want to do realistically, you know, you're not like I want to be president of the United States. You know what I mean? Like, what can you do realistically, the qualities that you have that can better yourself and better society and start giving back? Because that's when I started feeling great is when I started helping others, you know, and the seeing the changes in others helped change me as well. Exactly. There's so much science and psychology out there that says that even when you're feeling down, when you're feeling depressed, when you're feeling, you know, kind of at the end of your rope, that the one of the biggest things that you can do to bring your spirits up is go out and help other people, go out and serve other people, go out and be with other people. And that's going to wear off on you. Not only that, yeah. but there's something in your brain that releases dopamine. Mm -hmm. And it really helps you to, you know, be inspired, to be motivated. I, I love that about what you're saying. You know, and Reiki energy, you know, like a big factor is that when you go out there and you have people around you that have positive or good energy, you, that energy rubs off on you, you know, and if, if you ever notice when you're around a bunch of great people that are happy and, you know, you become happy, right? You know, and that's what the key is, is to, you know, and that's also another thing. When you have low self-esteem, don't hang out with people with low self-esteem. Start focusing on people you know that have a good, good qualities and good self-esteem because their quality, their health, their, their high self-esteem is going to rub off on you. You're going to be like, Hey, you know what? My friend is doing it. If she can do it or he can do it, I could do it too. You know, and that good energy is going to rub off on you. So, you know, my key thing too is, you know, as much as I liked a lot of people, I got rid of the negative people in my life. I got rid of the people that, you know, that had negative energy, low self-esteem that, that were dragging me down not just because they had low self-esteem but they were dragging me down with their negativeness and you know people that I felt like weren't benefiting me and were hurting me you know emotionally mentally I had to push them away it's not like I don't talk to them but they're not like you know in my circle you know you need the positive strong people who are going to bring you up in life in your circle and the other people they could be acquaintances but they're not the people that you want close to you the people you want close to you are the people that are going to pull you up and the people that are going to make you help you get to those goals that you want in life exactly i think it was jim Rohn who said you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with mm -hmm. so if we go by that and we believe that's true then the people that you hang out with need to be people people who are inspirational, motivational, yes. uh, whether that's, you know, online, whether that's face to face, whether that's, you know, whoever it is, and you get to be the person who decides whoever is in your inner circle. Yes. And, and I think that that is something that is essential to keep in mind. If you want someone that is inspirational and encouraging in your circle, then one, you have to be that person back. So that right. they want you in their circle Two, You, like I said, you get to pick who is in that circle. So if there's a family member or something like that, that is not, and they're always negative, they're always putting down, you can decide how often you put that person into your circle, bring them in right. with your family, bring them in with your children. So I absolutely love that. You know, it, it's so important. It's so important in life to be around good people because you are, you know, you become what what's around you, you know, whether you want to, it's your environment. You have to set up a positive good environment for yourself, you know, so you could be a better person. Exactly. So how does confidence and self-esteem, how does that help us to become better marriage partners and parents? You know, you know, when it comes to self-esteem, when you are a person who believes in yourself and you, you strive for higher things in life, you know, that, if, you know, your children see that your children are going to follow off of you. You know, most of the time your children will follow your, your characteristics and they will follow the things you do in life. You are their role model. You are their mentor. So what you do in life is going to play a huge factor on what these children become in life. You know, when you, when you look at kids, they're, you know, as they get older, I see a lot of qualities in my, myself and my husband in my children. And it's because they follow what you do. So if you focus on building your self-esteem and you start striving for higher things in life, your children are going to see that and they're going to follow 
as well. And when it comes to relationships, you know, you, you want to, if you feel good about yourself, you know, at, you're going to, you're going to, if you feel good about yourself and you're going to, you're going to say, you know, you're going to boost your, your husband or your wife, you know, and, and, and say good things about them. Because when you don't feel good about yourself as a person, you don't compliment other people because you're miserable inside, you know, you, you know, when you're, when you're happy with yourself, you, that, that happiness, that positiveness throws out on others. It also, you know, when, when you're happy, you want to continue to be happy. So you're going to continue to do things together and, you know, and you're able to communicate better. You know, when two people are, have good self-esteem, they get along better, they communicate better, they do things together, they go out, you know, and, and it's just, it, it, it helps, you know, it, all these things, it, it just builds a more solid, stronger, you know, um, good uh, relationship. And when you're, when you're not, when you have low self-esteem, you, you, a lot of times people will not t tell their partner, you know, and they, they're hiding things within themselves. And the more you hide, the, the further you get, you know, and your husband or your wife can't read your mind. The only way in life you're going to understand each other is to communicate with each other. Exactly. I think that when we have confidence, when we have this healthy uh, self-esteem, we can then, you know, we communicate better with our spouse. We mm -hmm. are happy. We're, we're confident to talk to our spouse. And when we're not confident in ourselves, when we don't have that self-esteem, when we're, you know, dragging and stressed out and, and all these different things, that's when we start piling stuff on the back burner that's when we start piling stuff deep in ourselves hey what if you know my spouse doesn't like you know my my hair loss what if my spouse doesn't like you know you know fill in the blank with whatever that may be yeah. because we all you know husbands wives we all have different things that we struggle with but if we're yeah. working on confidence in our own self-esteem and we're happy we're proud of ourselves we're proud of our achievements we're you know we, we've been able to lean into the struggle then that opens up the lines of communication to better our relationship with our partner. Right. I know a lot of people too, they fear to tell their partner something because even let's say with hair loss, they fear, well, you know, if, if my, my partner, you know, I'm scared that my partner is not going to love me as much because I'm losing my hair. I don't look the way I did when I was 20 years old, you know, and then you have to realize if your partner loves you, they're going to love you no matter what, they're going to be there no matter what, you know, it's, it's, it's just key. When two people love each other, they're in for the long haul. They're in for, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, hair loss or, you know, a disease or a condition is not going to make that person to stop loving you. You know, nobody in this world, every, you know, it, I hate the word being perfect, perfect, because there is no such thing as perfect. No one, no one or one thing in life is perfect. You know, everything has its flaws. And, you know, that, that word is not really a true word in my vocabulary. It's, it, it, it exists in our language, but it's not, it, it's realistically, there is no such thing as perfect. Nobody's perfect. No, you know, one thing is perfect. Everybody has flaws. Everybody has their, their issues. Everybody has something, you know, and it's just, you know, you have to realize like, it goes back we're not the only one, you know, you're not the only one every, you know, there's millions of people just like you, you know, it's just not being afraid or embarrassed to, to reach out and ask for help. That's the key. A lot of people don't want to talk about issues. They don't want to talk about their low self-esteem because they're embarrassed. There's nothing to be embarrassed because everybody has something and everybody has some degree of low self-esteem. You know, nobody has total high self-esteem. There's always issues in your life that you feel a little bit, you know, you know, it's kind of, you know, you might have high self-esteem, but there's certain things in life that kind of make you feel, you know, uh, I, what's the word that it's kind of makes you feel you're just, you know, you just feel, you know, it, it brings you down, it pulls you a little bit, but it's not to the point where you have low self-esteem. There's things in life that in your, that you're not perfect about that, you know, that, that kind of make you feel a little unsettled in your life. And you just have to keep working on those things, you know, um, everybody, even with high self-esteem, we all have our flaws. We all have things in life, you know, where nobody's perfect. Exactly. I was listening to an interview with Tony Robbins the other day and Tony Robbins, you know, this, you know, he's worth a half a billion dollars. He's doing an yeah. incredible business. He's got high impact. Uh, he's impacting movie stars and stuff like that. And he was talking about allowing fear and insecurities in. And one of the things I love about what he said is that when you're service and you're focusing on the people that you're serving, you don't have room to allow fear 
to come into our your own life. That's and true. So yeah, th- there's definitely something about that, and, and and you know that that definitely also comes into play when it comes to marriage, because as as you know, marriage partners, you know, we we don't you know, we no longer live cons- you know specifically for ourselves. You know, we're living for our spouse and building ourselves up, building them up, and helping them and and different things. And so when we have this attitude of serviceness or an attitude of gratitude and different things, we can really then mend that relationship to improve it and to make it consistently better. You know what I noticed is fear and low self-esteem. You know what? A lot of times just overanalyzation or thinking too much, that brings in fear, that brings in low self-esteem. Because when you start to think too much about one subject and you start to analyze it, you know, sometimes you create things that aren't even there. And sometimes you make things bigger than what it actually is. You know, any, you know, and, and that's when the fear starts to set in, low self-esteem, you self-doubt, you know, and that that is one key. When you start seeing yourself overanalyze something or you start thinking about something too much, pull yourself out, say, hey, Hey, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta stop, you know, because an, owner, you know, an, overanalyzing things doesn't get you anywhere in life. And it usually, it's usually you're nowhere near, like you, you start developing a lot of things that aren't even there. And it's like, you know, you, you, that's one thing that you have to kind of learn how to put on the back burner and not overanalyze things, look at things for what they are at the moment and deal with it, cope with it and figure out, okay, I short term goals and long-term goals. What can I do to make this better? Because that's the key. I always create short-term goals and long-term goals when I have a problem. And, you know, and then, you know, you might not, you might not get where you are, you know, but there's no such thing as failure because you try to make that situation better or you try to get rid of that situation. So give yourself a pat on the back, you know, when you try to make things better in your life, even though those things maybe didn't get exactly the way you wanted it to get, hey, you made an effort. Give yourself, a, you know, credit because not many people would want to do that. So, you know, give yourself, you got, you know, give yourself some, some esteem, you know, say to yourself, hey, you know, I tried, I am, you know, I, I had the strength to try. I had, you know, I am, a, I, mean, I am a good person, you know, and, you know, that's one way to help you with your self-esteem. Oh, and I think there's also something to be said for leaning into the struggle because you mm-hmm. never know how your struggle is going to help or be a service to somebody else. I think and struggles it, in other people's lives are the biggest thing because it, you know, people love to hear other people's stories. It's just like, it's, you know, it just, it, it helps people because so many people out there can relate to you. Exactly. I absolutely love that. So as we're continuing with the marriage subject, what are some ways that you're intentional about spending time with your husband, especially when you live such a busy life, you're out helping people, you're a coach, you've, you know, you're on talk shows, you're on Dr. Oz and, and, and all these awesome things. How are you intentional about spending time with your husband? We always create a date night, you know, like on weekends was always our thing because we were always very busy during the week. So when it came time for the weekend, we always made Friday our date night. We always, you know, we always went out on Friday, you know, Saturday would be with the kids, you know, now our kids are pretty much grown. So it's, you know, they're out doing their thing, but it was always like Friday was our little date night. We'd go somewhere, even if we went out for sushi somewhere, you know, we just, you know, have a glass of wine and, you know, have sushi, maybe meet up with our friends afterwards do things that were fun you know and just to get the stress off spend time to talk to each other and also too you know what at nighttime you know before you went to bed you know instead of just watching tv and focus on other stuff or you're in the computer room you know playing on the computer and your other spouse is in the other room watching tv try to spend some quality time and talk to that person so how was your day honey you know what'd you do today you know and then you know talk about if they had a hard day you know what you know ask them about it you know and then you know just be there for them you know, support them, you know, and that's a, a way to stay close too. And, and if you could pick up the phone during the day, if you have a little extra time, call your spouse and talk to them and just, you know, just to say hello, even if they can't really talk to you at the moment, just say, Hey, I was just thinking about you. I just wanted to give you a call. I know you're busy. And maybe the words, I love you, you know, I'll see, I'll see you tonight. You know, those things mean a lot, you know, people don't realize it, but even to your friends too, like a couple, a couple of words sentence can go a long way. Compliment 
pleasing people means is so important because a lot of people don't compliment their spouses. You believe it or not, it's, you know, people don't always, you know, reach out to say, honey, you look beautiful, honey, you know, and it's not just the way you look on the outside, but just you're beautiful on the inside, you know, you know, just, you know, if they do something good, if, you know, we're always used to maybe our spouse making dinner for us, you know, have you ever complimented your spouse and said, that was delicious, honey that was great, a great meal, you know, just given, you know, or if your friend does something for you, say, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. People don't realize it, but a compliment goes a long way. People, it makes a person feel good. And again, it goes back to what we were saying earlier. People need to feel like they're, they're doing something good when they know they helped somebody or made somebody feel good. It goes a long way and it actually can bond the relationship between the two people too. Completely agree with that. You know, again, our words are important. There are some different things that we can do to build up our spouses. There are some different things that we can do to build up our partners. And we need to understand how important our words are. You know, that's one of the things I teach and preach, uh, you know, about marriage and about fatherhood and, and about motherhood. I don't, I don't do a lot of teaching on motherhood because I'm not <laughs> mom, but, <laughs> but you know, is this idea of how powerful our words are because a single word from me can either lift up my wife's spirits or they can, it can bring it crashing down. Right. And you know, so there's, there's so much different way. A, a simple word that I love you can really boost my daughters and encourage them and let them know that the, Hey, you know what? They're worth it. That I care for them, that I'm sold out for them. Or it can, you know, if I say the wrong thing at the wrong time, it can really diminish uh, the way they look at themselves and their own value. Words are so powerful. I, you know, I call it the words of wisdom because, you know, and if you ever realize uh, more people remember the negative and the bad things than they do the good things, you know, uh, and it, it's really important when you talk to somebody, how you talk to somebody or what you say to that person, because it stays with them their whole life, you know? So when you have children or you're growing up in a family, it's very important to say good things and try your best because sometimes we all get angry and we might say a few things here and there we don't mean, but you know, it, it, you always have to try to, you know, think before you talk is key, you know, and try to try to be, you know, uh, try to be as loving as you can. And I try to boost my I've always tried to boost my kids self esteem from the moment they came on this planet every since, you know, I just, I would always compliment them and, and say great things, you know. And, you know, to the point where when they got older, like, mommy, are you telling me the truth? Because then they would ask me for questions, you know, ask me questions about certain things. They wanted the real answers, you know, because I was always boosting them, you know. She, my daughter could have on, you know, a blue sock, an orange, you know, shirt and a, a green, you know, a green pair of pants. And she goes, how do I look when she was little? And I go, oh, you look wonderful, honey, you know. And, uh, you know, you always have to just try to boost yourself as their seem and and tell them you know you could do anything you put your mind to it you have the capabilities you can do anything you know and tell them how how great they are you know and even when you tell your spouse how great they are it goes a long way it gives them strength inner strength you know and, and it's it's a powerful thing words absolutely love it. thank you for listening to the family life movement podcast i hope you had as much fun as we did To hear our thoughts on the podcast and to continue this conversation, join our free Facebook group by searching for the Family Life Movement. See the show notes for links to our guest social media and websites and any resources that were mentioned will also be linked in the show notes. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please go rate and review and send us a screenshot and we will send you a special access gift. Join us next time for more conversations, tips, and tricks on growing your business around your family. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.